Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over our limit laws. This uh, standard is covered in Calculus 1 or Calculus AB and BC of the AP Calculus um, courses. Don't forget to download our Epic Formula Sheets to help you do well on your calculus exams. You can just scan this QR code right here or visit our website at math.serve.com underneath AP Calculus and you can gain access to um, the link to download our epic formula sheet which has all the formulas you need to know to do well in calculus all right let's take a look at the limit laws so it's as follows initial condition is if we have the following hypothesis if a c k m and n So let's say A, C, K, M, and N are real numbers. So if they're real numbers, they're basically defined, okay? So let's say they're real numbers and the following limits exist. And the limit as X approaches A of the function F of X is equal to M and the limit as x approaches a of the function g of x is equal to n so this is the hypothesis all right and then we're going to take a look at the at the uh, conclusions then we have the following laws number one let me bring my tool over here number one then we have the situation where the limit as x approaches a of the constant c is equal to c. Okay? This is known as the constant rule. Rule number one. And we see why this makes sense because the output, the function is constant, is independent of what x does. So whatever x does, the function will always have the same output value. Alrighty, number two, the limit as x approaches a of the power x to the n is equal to a to the n power. Okay, so if you have a monomial, um, a monomial in a function of x, the limit as x approaches a, you just substitute um, the a value into x and you have a to the n power okay and this is known as power rule number one there's going to be another power rule that um, we're going to be considering shortly all right moving right along number three the limit as x approaches a of the sum of two functions let's say we have f of x plus g of x so the limit as x approaches a of the sum of um, two functions f of x and g of x what's how do we do a limit like this well according to the limit laws you can actually take the limit of these two functions that you're adding together okay so it becomes the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of what of g of x okay and we know what these two limits are if you look at our hypothesis the first limit is m and the second limit is n so this is simply um m plus n okay so this particular rule that we just came up with this is known as the sum rule Alrighty, moving right along. Now for formula number four, what if we have the difference? Can you guess what the rule is going to be in that case? What if we have the limit as x approaches a of the difference of the functions f of x and g of x? So f of x minus g of x. Now the rule that was applied to the sum rule Guess what? Exactly the same rule also applies to the difference between two functions. This becomes 
the limits of the functions that you're subtracting in that order, okay? Limit as x approaches a of the first function minus the limit as x approaches a of the second function, g of x. And then we know what these two limits are, right? The first is m, the second is n, so this becomes m minus n. This formula, ladies and gentlemen, is known as the difference rule. Moving right along to quest, uh, to rule number five. Now, what if we have um, a function multiplied by a constant? So limit as x approaches a of um, some constant k multiplied by, let's say, f of x, okay? k times the function f of x. Now, what is this limit going to be? Well, guess what? If you have a constant multiplied by a function, you can, are you taking the limit of that? You can write this as k times the limit as x approaches a of the function. Now, what does this tell us, ladies and gentlemen? This tells us that you can factor out constants when taking out, when finding the limit. Okay, factor out the co uh, coefficients um, and then focus your attention on the function if the coefficient or constant is being multiplied by the function. And then we know what this limit is, right? This limit is m, so we're going to have the answer k times m. All righty. So what is uh, this limit called? This is called the constant multiple rule. Constant multiple rule. Alrighty, moving along. Formula no, uh, limit law number six. Now what if we have the product of two functions? Let's say we're finding the limit as x approaches a of the product of function f of x and g of x. Now, can you guess what this limit law is going to be? Well, the same rule that applies to the sum, difference, sum and difference, the same applies here too, okay? Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it just basically means that if you have, finding the limit as x approaches a of a product of functions is the same thing as taking the limit of the individual functions that you are multiplying. Okay, so limit as x approaches a of f of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Okay, and we know exactly what these two limits are, right? So the first limit is m, we have m times the second limit which is n. All right, so what is what do you think this uh, rule, this law is going to be called? This is the um, product rule for limits, okay? So this is the product rule. Moving right along, let's look at the quotient rule. What if we have the quotient of two functions from uh, law number seven? Limit as x approaches a of the quotient of f of x and g of x. So take a look at this one. Can you guess what the limit is going to be in this case? Ladies and gentlemen, the same principle that applies to um, our limit laws in formula six, three and four, the same applies here, okay? So if you're taking the limit of the quotient of two functions, it is the same thing as taking the limit of the uh, functions that it's finding the quotient of, okay? So limit as x approaches a of the numerator function divided by the limit as x approaches a of the um, denominator function. There you have it. We know what the uh, limits are for the top and bottom. 
the numerator limit is m real number m divided by the bottom limit is the real number n so what do you think this rule is called well we mentioned this earlier this is the quotient rule for limits moving right along formula or law number eight what if we have a power not just the power of x let's say we have the power of a function okay so let's say we have um want to find the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x raised to the n power now what is this going to be well in a scenario like this we can take the limit of the function that's been raised to the power as long as n is a positive integer okay so this becomes uh, the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x raised to the n power and we know what the limit is right the limit of this function right here we already established what it is it is m so we have m raised to the n power and there are special conditions for this this scenario applies whenever n is a positive integer okay so n is a positive integer okay all right so what rule is this this is our power rule number two talked about power rule one earlier so this is power rule two where what we're raising to the power is a function not just x okay now let's look at the inverse of a power the root what if we're finding the limit of the root of a function so limit as x approaches a of the nth root of the function f of x so what is this limit going to be well we're going to follow exactly the same principle as formula number eight as long as n is a positive integer and when n is even the limit is a positive number so we don't have unreal numbers okay as our output so in a scenario like this is simply taking the limit of the radicand function limit as x approaches a of the radicand function and we take the nth root of the result all right so the limit basically goes underneath the square root just as it did with the power and we know what this limit is right this limit is m so we're going to have the nth root of the real number m okay all right, so what are the constraints for this? So there's something we forgot to, there's another one that had a constraint we didn't indicate. Let's go ahead and address that real quick. So in formula number seven, there's a constraint there. So for formula number, rule number seven, this re, uh, requires that um, our denominator here, n, for this particular case, n cannot be zero, okay, or else the limit will be undefined. It will not exist as a result, okay? So there you have it. Now. Uh, for formula nine, um, law number nine, this requires that it has two conditions, okay? N is a positive integer. Now, whenever N is even, we have to be careful to make sure that M is greater than zero, okay? So if M is, if N is even, We're going to make an assumption if n is even assume assume that this limit right here m is greater than zero to ensure that we don't have an imaginary limit okay and this formula right here is known as the root rule for limits okay so this is the root rule 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of limits or you're just reviewing it, do give us a like. Your positive feedback is extremely valuable to us. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We upload uh, math tutorials to our page on a regular basis. So subscribe so you can get notification of those updates. If you'd like to gain access to our epic calculus formula sheet, Go ahead and scan this QR code or visit our website at mathgotserve.com and you can download um, that formula for free and gain access to tons of support resources to help you do well on this course. If there are any questions or comments that you have about any of the rules that we went over or any calculus questions in general, just post it in the comment section below and we will be more than glad to assist you. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.